Hi guys and welcome back to Miss Clark Does Science. Last time we started the new topic 2.1 Year 11 Science of Classification and Biodiversity. We began to talk about the basic classification of animals and plants. Today we're going to be moving on in a little bit more detail to point B that states organisms with similar features and characteristics are classified into groups and the need for a scientific system for naming organisms. So we're going to be talking a little bit about these creatures over here. You might recognise these and also how we get from this whole array of animals or plants down to individual species at the bottom. OK, so the first thing that we need to understand is that we need a systematic system to help us in understanding the variety of living things on the planet and their trends and relationships. So we need a system. You know, we're scientists here. We need a system for identifying all the creatures on the planet and plants. So the classification system is just that. And it may be based on morphological features or DNA analysis. Just to go over these two things separately. So morphological basically means shape or size. Okay, so over here I've got some examples. You've got insects, or an ant in this case, showing a hind leg at the back, which is a similar shape to a horse leg. Obviously not a similar size, but you get the picture. And similarly over here we have a fish fin and a dolphin flipper. They both point out to the side and they both have similar functions. Okay, similarly with wings. We have wings on insects and we have wings on birds. They look fairly similar obviously a wing doesn't look like a flipper doesn't look like a leg okay the idea is that we group them based on morphological features and this is the kind of way that we group them in very basic terms then we have dna analysis so dna analysis you can imagine is a little bit more precise a little bit more accurate and it also can give us quite direct comparisons between species so here we have a human compared to a chimpanzee gorilla and orangutan you can see that our aligned sequence so sequence of dna is very similar with a chimpanzee in particular in fact all but this part here in the dna is actually identical and similarly with gorillas and orangutans we share varying degrees of dna with these creatures so obviously the theory of evolution is a theory i'm not here to out any religious beliefs but this just goes to show that you can use dna to classify different organisms into almost like a family tree here of relatedness Okay, so moving on, we also have the Five Kingdom classification, which is an old style classification system, but it still stands today and it's something that's included in your specification. So it uses morphological features, so we already know that it's using size, shape, uh, how, an, how an organism looks to, to classify it. And it includes five different kingdoms, with firstly the bacteria kingdom, the single celled organisms the plants, the fungi, and the animals. Now we've heard of the animals and the plants before, but let's go through some of the others. So this diagram here kind of goes through them all as an overall. So in our bacteria, which is this one over here, bacteria can include lots of different microorganisms. They live in our gut, so they're commonly referred to as germs in some cases, but not all of bacteria is bad bacteria. Then we have the single-celled organisms, it's difficult to place the single-celled organisms. Now, they're placed over here in this diagram, protozoans, uh, algae. Single-celled organisms can also be actually bacteria, and this is kind of the debate with this system, because there's a little bit of overlap between these two groups. But generally speaking, single-celled organisms are made of one type of cell, or one cell, okay? Back whereas bacteria are generally a lot smaller and can be of different forms. So then we have plants. We know about plants quite a lot. So we've got a tree over here. We've got uh, some moss down here. Ferns that I talked about in the last video being non-flowering plants. And then we've got fungi, which is all of your mushrooms, your yeast, your mould. These things that aren't necessarily plants because they don't behave in similar ways. They don't usually photosynthesize, but they get their nutrients from the ground and from decaying organisms. They're slightly different fungi. And then we have the animals, which we're all very familiar with. Insects, uh, marine life, we've got a squid here, horses, uh, a sea sponge down here. That's not the same kind of sponge as we use in our shower, although you can use loofers, which are actually can be from real life sea sponges. And then earthworms here. So these are the different types of kingdoms. 
So the main thing you need to get from this slide is that you can be able to name the five different kingdoms within the five kingdom classification. Bacteria, single-celled organisms, plants, fungi and animals. Now the next part of this point in the spec talks about scientific names and what it means by scientific names up here is just the name that we give to individual species that is specific to that species. Okay so we do this to avoid language and cultural barriers and let me give you an example here. So here is a woodlouse as I would call it. Uh, it's a common insect found under rocks and gardens, very common in the UK, uh, particularly across Europe as well. Now these woodlice, as we call them, that's actually a common name for this organism. It's actually called an Aniscus acellus. Okay, that's its scientific name for this particular species. It's not actually called a woodlice in a lab or in scientific journals or things like that. And the reason why we don't call it that is because across the world they has it has lots of different names. And down here, this is just taken from Wikipedia. This is a list of all the common names for this woodlouse. So we've got armadillo bug, we've got cheesy bug from Kent apparently, we've got granny grey from south wales down here i've never heard it been called a granny grey but apparently it can be called that we've got roly polies i have actually heard this one before all these different names mean nothing its actual name is aniscus acellus and it's to avoid confusion between different languages and cultures so we've talked a little bit about classification in the five kingdoms and i've got the word kingdom up here so this is where this comes in these five kingdoms up here but we also talked about the scientific name, which actually is these two names combined down the bottom. So before, when we had the Aniscus acellus, that was its genus and species, the two names combined, put side by side. And they usually put these two names in italics to show that this is what the official name is for that species. But what about these things in the middle? So you need to know for your GCSE the order of these words in particular, not the order of these, not the order for each individual animal, but you need to know the order of how we classify things. So you need to know that it's kingdom at the top, then phylum, then class, then order, then family, then genus, then species at the bottom. Okay. These words can mean nothing to you. All they are is differing degrees of classification. Okay, so at the top we have the five kingdoms and then we have all sorts of phylum. We have then lots of classes, orders, families, all these things. Words like carnivore that you might know of is part of this system. Okay. But at the bottom is the important bit. So it goes genus, then species. Species is the last word in a name. Okay, so before it would have been a cellus, okay? Over here we've got an example, and this is something that you might find in an exam, okay? So they might give you two different species and compare them. So you would never be expected to memorise the specific kingdom of humans or the specific order of ostriches. That's not something that they're expecting. They're expecting you to use logic here. So you can see that humans and ostriches actually are in the same classification for kingdoms and phylums. We are chordata. Okay, that usually means we have a spinal cord, chordata. Okay, not the same as vertebrates. Okay, so then we have different classes though. So humans are mammalia, which means they're mammals, whereas ostriches are aves, which you may uh, recognize as like av avarian, which is a bird or a flying animal. Okay, and then we go even further order, family, genus, and species. And Homo sapien, I hope, is familiar to you because Homo sapien is our scientific name as humans. Okay, and when you learn about ancient history and you learn about the neanderthals and people like that that's how we differed because we were of a different species and likewise an ostrich's full name is struthio camellus okay that's its name rather than just ostrich which can change between cultures so just as a side note here what they might do in an exam is they might get rid of this whole side and they might say okay uh, what is the species of humans and you would correctly have to write down sapien or they might say okay What is the genus of an ostrich and you might have to say ah, it's this one or they might say uh, Which parts of the human and ostrich are the same and you would say oh chordata and animalia Or they might say you know what kingdom is the human from and you would have to say animalia So you're just using the logic rather than having to memorize things even though you're writing down these words Obviously you would refer back to spelling you would they would give you this in the question but you just need to know what order these come in okay and i've seen questions before where they say okay here's here's the name of something now which bit is the genus and you have to write down that 
Okay, so it's just those kind of questions. And if you ever get stuck with a question like this, feel free to post about it in the comments below. So we're nearing the end and I just wanted to come back to one of the pictures on the front of the title screen that I used earlier. This is uh, a triangle and it gets progressively more specific with the species that they're mentioning. So at the top here we have the kingdom Animalia. So this includes not all of these. We have lots more animals than just this. And then we have Chordata and then Mammalia and then Carnivora. This is where Carnivore comes from that I was talking about earlier. It's actually in order. All the way down to the grizzly bear whose actual scientific name is Ursus Arctus. Okay, so we made it to the end of that spec point today. Next time we'll be moving on to how organisms are adapted to their environments and how they compete with each other to survive in the wild world.